Alpha 21 for seven days has only just arrived, but we're starting to get more and more information about Alpha 22. According to the devs, they have what they've referred to as a, quote, short Alpha 22 plan, and that it's, quote, not going to take a year and a half. So theoretically, it could only be a few months away. Wishful thinking, I know. But the fact is, a portion of the dev team has been working on Alpha 22 content for approximately the last year, which was confirmed by the Fun Pimps last October during my developer interview. Release time frame aside, as far as we can tell, Alpha 22 has about three core features to it. Bandits, an overhaul to the character model, and the new armor system. So stick around and I'll get you all caught up on everything we know about Alpha 22 so far. Let's review the long-awaited Bandits first. From what was discussed in the Alpha 21 developer livestreams, bandits will pretty much transform the game. Some features that have been mentioned include a duck in cover mechanic where bandits will seek cover behind something when they're under ranged fire. There will also be two factions and they'll have their own camps and outposts. There will also be bandit specific wandering hordes and you can even trigger these in the console right now. It just doesn't work yet, of course. Supposedly, one of the reasons that they didn't make it for Alpha 21 is because they hadn't fully implemented their AI or sorted out their functions just yet. They don't want bandits to be, quote, just a guy in the road. Instead, they want to integrate them into quests, such as having dynamic events that could trigger like an ambush on the way back to deliver a supply satchel maybe to the trader. And so far, we know that there should be three models for each bandit faction. This faction here has a more tribal look, and we've seen the raider and the overlord so far. In the game's XM files, we can see code for a melee, ranged, and a bandit leader option, so there's likely one more yet to be revealed for this faction. Then there's this new character model. So far, we've seen several screenshots and some short video clips. What allegedly started as just an overhaul of the heads and faces quickly turned into a complete transformation, thankfully, of the whole character with new animations. There's no denying that this upgrade was long overdue, and it should be universally welcomed by fans. We have not yet been shown what the character customization choices will be. If I had to guess, I'd venture to say that uh, it's probably just going to be we'll have a selection of heads to choose from, like pre-made character faces, but then you'll be able to tinker with things like hairstyle, hair color, facial hair, body type, skin tone, things like that. Next up, we have the new character armor. This was also revealed many, many months ago. I'm expecting to see all current armor removed. Most likely armor mods will be removed as well. It's possible we'll even see the removal of all clothing, particularly things like, you know, the college jacket and the duster. Instead, we'll have a new four piece armor system. First, let's look at the old concept images. None of these armor sets have been confirmed and these concept images here are years old at this point, but the indication thus far is that we are indeed moving in this direction. Nonetheless, I'll call the following six sets speculative armor. First, we have the Nerd Outfit. Various parts of this set will confer bonuses such as increased crafted item quality, an XP bonus similar to the Nerdy Glasses, more damage with batons, increased safe fall distance, similar to what we see with the Impact Bracing mod, I guess, and a hefty bonus for wearing the whole set, including 10 times as much XP from reading books and more damage from robotic weapons. Next up is the Farmer Outfit. This gives bonuses similar to what we see from Living Off the Land perks, but also gives you a speed bonus in grass, more rifle damage, and a set bonus that includes food not encumbering you. The mining set gives bonuses in the same vein as Miner 69er and Motherload, with stamina, damage, and harvesting bonuses with pickaxes, and the set allows ore to not encumber you. Back in Alpha 20, we could actually see a model of a character wearing this set of armor. For some reason, you could just spawn this in with the entity spawner back then. The Lumberjack outfit confers bonuses with the axe and gives a couple of decent biome bonuses the full set will offer a better carrying capacity. The scavenger set will allow for bonuses when harvesting and the full set gives 20% better loot stage, which is actually just as good as four points into Lucky Looter. And finally, the Nomad set, which gives various bonuses, including lockpicking, reduced radiation, and better bartering. Of note, this one seems quite similar to the first confirmed character armor set, the Wasteland Assassin, so they could possibly be the same. Place your bets in the comments below, and we'll move on to the sets that were revealed to us in the latest round of developer live streams. 
So here is the Wasteland Assassin. We don't know what the bonuses are yet, but I would venture to say that there's something to do with stealth, a Wasteland biome bonus, possibly radiation protection, and maybe even a bow or blade bonus. Then we have the Hoarder outfit, which according to the commentary during the live stream should maybe increase your carrying capacity among some other bonuses, but there was some mention of it also possibly increasing your noise output. Then we have the Desert outfit. This was the only set so far where we've been shown the male and the female variations. I do expect to see better hyperthermal protection and perhaps some other desert biome related bonuses with this set. And this one here was the last set on display during the old live streams. It's called the Raider Armor. I think this will fit into the heavy armor category, so crit resistance and armor rating will likely be higher than the others that we've seen so far, but it might also have like a movement speed penalty. Most recently though, we were shown this set of plant fiber armor, and here we can also see the character animation work. I would expect this to act very similar to the current padded armor. So it shouldn't, uh, for example, maybe affect the movement speed. It might also give a speed or even like a stealth bonus, particularly maybe in the forest biome. Then we have this beefy set of iron or steel armor. I expect this to function much the same way as the current iron or steel armor. Protection should be quite high at the cost of stamina, movement speed, and increased noise. But there might also be buffs associated with this, such as maybe increased melee weapon damage. The commando armor currently visible within the game on a mannequin is the replacement for military armor. This set will likely offer some medium level of protection, perhaps even a special resistance to ballistic attacks from like the bandits. It might also have buffs with firearms such as increased reload speed a la the bandolier mod or less encumbrance when carrying ammunition a la what we saw with some of the speculated armor sets. And there could be many, many more sets as well. I doubt that we've seen them all just yet. Notably, we haven't seen a set of winter armor. This set could offer cold protection, a snow biome bonus, and even maybe hunting or animal harvesting related bonuses. I think we need to talk about the implications of this new armor system. So I project that armor will be difficult to find, but you should be able to find certain sets at specific traders, like maybe the farmer set will be with Trader Wrecked or the commando set will be with Trader Hue. Most likely with the heavy emphasis on crafting in Alpha 21, I think you'll be expected to craft most of your own armor. It's entirely possible that each armor set will be classified as light or heavy, and so therefore for the current system of heavy and light armor skills and the strength and agility tree will remain as is. And then of course, armor magazines would simply unlock higher quality armor for each of these sets all at the same time. But I think it would be a lot better if crafting quality for these sets of armor was locked behind specific skills. So for example, you might take points into salvage operations and unlock better quality levels for the scavenger armor. Or maybe you take more points into mother load and that unlocks increasing quality levels for just the minor armor. The biggest criticism of the new armor system that I've seen so far is that you'll be pretty much incentivized to swap different sets of armor on and off multiple times per day, depending on your activity. So maybe you do some morning crop harvesting with the farmer gear on, you swap it off for some minor gear, you go mining for the day, then it's off to do some questing, but first I need to grab my commando armor. Oh wait, no, actually I have to craft this new gun first. So I put on the nerd armor for a minute, craft the gun, jump into my commando gear. Oh wait, that quest was in the wasteland. So maybe I should get my nomad gear. And then I need to max out my loot stage for the main loot. So I need to bring my scavenger gear. You get the point. But I think the most logical workaround for this is to make armor rare to find and loot, valuable to purchase from the trader, and difficult to craft. So you'll probably have access to craft two or three types of armor through your primary skills, and you might be able to swap them out situationally. But I don't think it's realistic to think that you should have all 13 or 15 or 20 or whatever full sets of armor in any reasonable amount of time. It's definitely going to be interesting though to see what people's characters look like in the first few weeks of a playthrough before you get your first full set, or if some mixture of armor pieces will become the new meta instead of wearing like one full thematic set. So earlier we discussed radiation protection with the speculated nomad armor, and then we also saw the wasteland assassin outfit, which likely has some sort of a wasteland bonus associated with it. Wasteland radiation is a subject that has been talked about going way back to Alpha 19 and the dev live streams for Alpha 20. 
the fun pimps want to make the wasteland more dangerous. In Alpha 20, we saw the massive loot stage increase in the wasteland, which meant you'd always be finding the best loot there. And it was really imbalanced, making the other biomes more or less obsolete. But that was tentatively fixed in Alpha 21 with the biome game stage scaling, which now means that the wasteland is also by far the most dangerous biome. But it's still perhaps not enough, if you ask me. There needs to be some other type of barrier to all that juicy loot that you can find there. And the answer, I think, is radiation. It's the reason they're adding in the Wasteland Assassin and Nomad gear. And the hazmat suit might make a full-on comeback. And they've even discussed a new consumable anti-radiation pill in the past. Essentially, you'll start accumulating radiation poisoning in the wasteland, and without a way to prevent, mitigate, or treat it, you'll end up suffering greatly before eventually dying. And I think this feature will finally see the light in Alpha 22, and the reason for its delay was the character armor system. There's actually a Wasteland Radiation mod available right now, and it's pretty fun to play with. And you may be familiar with the Wasteland Radiation in Darkness Falls, which is pretty much along the lines of what we'll eventually see in the vanilla game. We've also seen some mention of a weather overhaul, both during my developer interview and also posted on the forums, which might mean that weather will play a more important role in future updates, which would also lend more utility to these specialized armor sets, but I don't have any specifics to share on this just yet. Recently, the Fun Pimps teased a picture of a new zombie variation feature. I don't know of any plans to add any new zombies right now. They have mentioned boss zombies several times where you might see the same zombies, but with uh, some of them being much more powerful. We can see examples of this right now with the Twitch integration features. And I know that Joel has designed some new special infected zombie types, but I haven't heard of any plans to implement them just yet. But this is a common complaint among players that even though we have 29 different zombies, most of them with regular feral and radiated variations, they do start to feel repetitive over time. So I think that the zombie variation feature is something to look forward to. The footage that you're looking at here is not what will be coming in the future. This is an old Alpha 19 mod called Bragado's Zombie Fiesta, and this adds about six variations to many of the zombies. It's exactly what the fun pimps are teasing, but this mod is no longer supported, so making it a vanilla feature is something I'm really looking forward to. The next topic here is fast travel, so have a listen to this. As you can see, there's a teleport, or I mean a helipad that's that, you know, it has an Alpha 22 uh, kind of feature involved with it. We won't talk about too much tonight. So definitely a little bit of a slip up there. The helicopter pad is probably the beginning of a new fast travel or teleportation feature. So let's look at what that might look like in game. Maybe you pay a fee of dukes to travel from one trader helipad to another, or maybe you complete a certain quest tier and you can then fast travel to that specific trader, incentivizing you to do jobs for multiple traders. Or maybe there will be the addition of an in-game helicopter where, if present on the landing pad, might allow players to then teleport with the helicopter to another helipad on the map. There might also be the ability to build your own helipad so that you can travel directly to and from your base or to the trader at will. Let me know what your fast travel theories are in the comments. I'm very curious to see how they would handle a few issues though. Traders are already extremely powerful and having access to like all of them every three days could really lead to an imbalance of progression. And what are they gonna do about the passage of time? Is teleportation going to be instant or will there be some sort of a lapse of time in between travel? And the fun pimps are also looking into new UI or user interface concepts, which you can see here. Of course, these are not final. They're just kind of testing things out and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Uh, let me know what you think of these. I really like it. It's a very refreshing appearance, but to me, <laughs> the appearance of the UI is less important than the, the function and the utility. As long as I can get stuff done, I'm fine. And here you can see some of the concept art for the vehicle model changes. I do believe that all vehicles will be getting updated. They were waiting for the characters to be done before moving forward with this since the characters and the new armor sets have to be able to fit inside all of the vehicles without any sort of clipping issues. They're definitely leading into what I'm gonna call the goofy grunge aesthetic where <laughs> rifle buttstocks are in shorter supply than shovel handles and replacement motorcycle seats are in shorter supply than toilets. 
So to each their own, uh, but I definitely am looking forward to seeing how all of these turn out eventually. I will reserve judgment until I see the final product. And finally, we saw the first teasers for two new POIs, the Duke's Casino and Noah's Compound. They're still figuring out what exactly you'll be able to do in these locations. In my interview with Rick and Joel, we discussed that there would be a divergence point where you will select what side you're on. Theoretically, you might be able to explore both of these locations up to a certain point, and then you'll have to declare what side you're on, and then perhaps the opposing location would, would turn into a hostile POI at that time. And all of this here will be basically the foundation for the eventual like overarching storyline that will be a part of the game probably in Alpha 23 or into Gold. Gold meaning like the final release, the full release of the game, the end of early access. And so yeah, it shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone that after 10 years of development and 21 alphas, that there's probably going to be an Alpha 23. Just listen to this. It might be an Alpha 22 or 3 thing when, 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 when the visuals show up. And many of the features discussed here were labeled as Alpha 22 Plus, which means some of it could get pushed out to Alpha 23. Most notably, probably Bandits. Bandits have not been teased or discussed at all since the developer live streams, so they could once again get the boot to yet another their future update but i will be sure to keep you posted on future developments regarding seven days to die and the upcoming alpha 22 update so stay tuned for all of that and i'll catch you hopefully in the next video take care everyone hey everyone i just wanted to say thank you for watching for leaving a like but most of all thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see right here i hope this episode has earned your subscription and i can't wait to show you the next one best wishes to all and goodbye